this is the review for the chapter six test. Um, so in the first in the first question, we are solving for the system of we are solving the following system of equations. Now notice in this particular question, you have both of them as y equals at the beginning. Since both of these are y equals at the beginning, we want to set them equal to each other. So we're going to set equal to each other 25x plus 10 equals 20x plus 50. We're going to set them equal to each other and then solve for x. Once you have x, sub it back in to find your y. Go ahead and try this one on your own, please. Set them equal to each other. I give you about 20 more seconds or so. So again, when you have both equations as y equals and y equals, all you want to do is set them equal to each other and solve. So 25 x plus 10 equals 20x plus 50. We're just going to solve for x. You have letters on both sides. We want to get all the letters on one side first. So I'll do minus 20x and minus 20x. So I have 5x plus 10 equals 50. Now it's just a two-step equation. So minus 10 minus 10. So you have 5x equals 40. Divide by 5, divide by 5. And you should have x equals 8. Now you not only have to solve for X, you also have to solve for Y. So after you get what X is, you have to take that answer and sub it in to either X or X. Doesn't matter which one, you can sub it into either one. I'm going to sub it into the second one. That one looks easier to me. So instead of 20 times X, I'm going to take my eight and sub it in. So I'm going to have 20 times 8 instead of 20 times x plus 50. So 20 times 8 is 160 plus 50 gives us y being 210. So x equals 8 and y equals 210. Questions on that one? Again, just set them equal to each other. Both of them are y equals and y equals. Just set them equal to each other and solve. Take a look at question number two. Solve the system of equations below. Now, when I take a look at this one, this one is a little bit different, all right? This one, you could take and rearrange it for y equals and y equals. That's one way to do it. You could make opposites with your x's by multiplying this top equation by negative three and distribute, distribute, distribute. But when you take a look at this one, I notice right away that I have a positive two y and a negative two y. I have opposites there already. Since I have opposites there already, all that you really want to do is just add going down. When you add going down, these will cancel out because you have opposites there already. Remember that there's really a one in front of this X. So now we want to add going down. Go ahead and solve the rest of this one, please. You had opposites there already. So you're just going to add going down. Add together your X's and your X's, your plain numbers with your plain numbers. 
you're going to solve for x and then sub back in to find y. So in this one, we want to add going down 1x plus 3x gives you 4x. Bring down your equal sign. 7 plus negative 11 is negative 4. Now we're just going to solve for x. So divide by 4, divide by 4. You get x equals negative 1. Now you have your choice. Now we need to do the same thing that we did last time. We have our answer of x equals negative 1. We want to now take that and either sub in for x or x. Doesn't matter which equation, you could sub it into either one. I like that upper equation better. So instead of x plus 2y, I have negative 1 plus 2y equals 7. So now I'm going to solve this equation, plus 1 plus 1. So I have 2y equals 8 divide by two, divide by two, and you get y equals four. So my two answers are x equals negative one and y equals four. So again, in this one, you could have rearranged it for y equals. You could have multiplied this top equation and made opposites with your x's, but why bother? You already had here in the purple opposites with your y's. So since you had opposites, you could just add going down and those would cancel out. Questions on number two. Take a look at question number three. Now in number three, um, we're solving the system again. Notice that two does not go into five evenly. We don't have opposites there. We don't have opposites with the y's, but I could easily create my own opposites by multiplying. So what I would do for this one is I would create opposites with my y's. I have a 3y and a negative 1y. To make the opposite of 3, the opposite of 3 is negative 3. So to create a negative 3 down here, I need to multiply that entire bottom equation, distribute, 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 with a 3, because I'm trying to create a 3y and a negative 3y. The biggest single mistake that people make is forgetting to distribute all three times, especially with that last number. Go ahead and finish the rest of this one, please. You're going to distribute, distribute, distribute with that three, then you'll have opposites with your y, so you'll just add going down.
So I just recopied that top equation. Now I'm going to distribute three times five X is 15 X. Three times negative one Y is negative three Y. Three times 13 is 39. Now I can see that I have my opposites. I have a three Y and a negative three Y. So all I need to do now is add going down and these three Y's will cancel out. So 2X plus 15X is 17X equals uh, 12 plus 39 is 51. Divide by 17, divide by 17, you get X equals three. Now that I have my three, I can take my three and I could sub it into here or here. Remember, you have your choice. Once you get one answer, you have your choice which one you want to sub it into. I like avoiding minus signs and negative signs. So I'm going to sub it into my top equation. So instead of two times x, I'm going to do two times three. Again, where am I getting that three from? I'm getting that three from my answer right there because that's what x is. So instead of two times x, I have two times three plus three y equals 12. Now it's just a two-step equation. We need to multiply those together first. So we have six plus three Y equals 12. Minus six minus six. So I have three Y equals six, divide by three, divide by three, Y equals two. So I got X equals three and Y equals two. Questions on this one? Again, I created my own opposites by multiplying. The biggest mistake that people make is forgetting to distribute all three times. Take a look at question number four. It says the awesome taxi company charges riders 19 cents per mile plus a flat fee of 260 for a ride. The better taxi cab company charges riders 14 cents per mile plus a fat flat fee of 410 for a ride. After how many miles will the cost for both companies be the same? Now be the same means being equal to each other. So we wanna know when they're going to be equal to each other. Well, that means we want to set them equal to each other. Just like we did in question number one, where we had y equals and y equals, and we set the two equations equal to each other. That's exactly what you want to do here as well. It says that the awesome taxi cab company is 19 cents per mile. So 19 cents times X plus 260. We wanna know when that is equal to the better taxi cab company that charges 14 cents per mile plus the flat fee of 410. So just like in question number one, where we set the two things equal to each other, that's exactly what you're doing here. Go ahead and solve for X, please. You don't need to solve for Y in this one, all right? It just says after how many miles will they be the same or equal to each other? So we're just solving for X. So I have X's on both sides of the equal sign. I'm going to subtract 0 0.14 from both sides. So I have 0.05 X plus 260 equals 410. Now it's just a two-step equation, minus 260, minus 260. So I have 0 0.05 X equals um, this is equal to $1.50. 
divide by 0 0.05 on both sides. And we get an answer of 30. So after 30 miles, that's when they're going to be the same or equal to each other. Questions on this one. Again, this is very similar to question number one, where we just set them equal to each other, because that's when they're going to be the same or equal to each other. Take a look at question number five. In question number five, I think this is probably the hardest question out of the whole thing. Sarah's sub shop is making a total of 250 pre-made sandwiches. There are two kinds of sandwiches. The two kinds of sandwiches are ham and turkey. So far, they have 25% of the ham and 75% of the turkey, which is 120 sandwiches. How many sandwiches of each kind are they making? So we want to know what, how many ham there's going to be and how many turkey. When you go to set up your equations here, I'm going to use H for ham and T for turkey. It says that they're going to make 250 total sandwiches. So the number of ham plus the number of turkey equals 250 sandwiches. So far they had 25%. Now 25% is really the decimal 0.25. 75% is really the decimal 0.75 which is 120. So they have 25% of the ham. So you're gonna have 0.25 H plus 75% of the turkey. So 0.75 times the turkey equals 120 individual sandwiches. So there's our two equations. There's the system that we need to solve. Now, again, there's a couple different ways that you could do this. If you wanted to, we could use decimals. You could create opposites with your H's. Remember that this is really a one H and a one T. Anytime that there's a letter all by itself, there's really a one in front of it. So with that, you could say, let me just make this not look like an H and look like a one. So you could say, you could do and make opposites with your H's by multiplying, all right, we could multiply this top equation by negative 0.25. That would create opposites with your H's. You could multiply this top equation to make opposites with your T's by negative 0.75 if we wanted to, to make opposites with our T's. Or what you could do is you could take and get rid of your decimals. All right, we could take and get rid of our decimals by multiplying. This has two decimal places. So we could multiply by 100 to get rid of our decimals. All right, and then we would have 25H plus 75T equals 12,000. So we could do it that way as well. Whichever way that you want to do it is perfectly fine. All right, it doesn't really matter which way you want to do it. Go ahead and find H and T, please. Go ahead and find H and T, please. I think the easiest way personally is to multiply this top equation by negative 0 0.25. Distribute, distribute, distribute. That's how I'm going to do it. Again, there are multiple ways to do these questions.
if you do it my way, you would have negative 0 0.25 times 1H, which is negative 0 0.25H. Negative 0 0.25 times 1T is minus 0 0.25T. Negative 0 0.25 times 250 is negative 62.5. All I'm going to do with the second equation is just recopy it. I'm not touching the second equation at all. So now I have my opposites. I have my opposites with my H's. So when I go to add going down to solve the rest of it, those H's will cancel out. So I'm going to have 0 0.5 T equals 57.5. Divide by 0 0.5, divide by 0 0.5, and you get that T equals 115. Now that I have my 115, I can take and sub it back in to either here or here for T. This top equation is definitely easier. So I'm going to have H plus, now it was normally H plus T, so H plus 115 equals 250. Now just subtract 115 from both sides and you get that H equals 135. So they had 115 turkey sandwiches and 135 ham sandwiches. Again, that's probably the hardest question on the test. You have to set up your own equations, all right, and then solve it. Again, there are multiple ways that you could solve it. If you wanted to get rid of the decimals, you could by multiplying by 100. Distribute, distribute, distribute. Then you won't have those decimals to work with. Take a look at question number six. In question number six, again, it says solve the system of equations below. Now, when I take a look at this one, I notice that this top equation is y equals, but the bottom equation is not y equals. So what I would want to do first is I would want to rearrange this bottom equation for y equals. Get that y all by itself, then set them equal to each other. Just like the first question that we had. Go ahead and do question number six, please. Rearrange that bottom equation for y equals first by getting the y all by itself, and then set the two equations equal to each other. Solve for both x and y. So in the second equation, to get this y all by itself, I would add 2x and add 2x. That way you're getting the y all by itself. Remember, you can't add together an x and a plain number, but we could switch around the order if we wanted to and put it in that graphing form. So we get 2x minus 20. So now I have my two equations. I have these two equations that I circled in the blue. Now it's just like question number one, 
where both of these equations are in the y equals form. So all that I'm going to do is set them equal to each other. So I have negative 2x plus 48 equals the other equation of 2x minus 20. Now you're going to solve for x. So I would do plus 2x and plus 2x. So 48 equals 4x minus 20 plus 20 plus 20. So I get 68 equals 4x. Divide by 4, divide by 4, and you get that x equals 17. Now that I got x equals 17, now I'm going to take that and just take it and sub it in. I could take it and sub it into here for x or here for x. Um, I like that top equation better. So I'm going to sub it into that top equation. I have y equals, I have negative 2, but instead of times x, like the equation says, I'm going to do negative 2 times 17. So that's just like question number one. Negative 2 times 17 is negative 34. Negative 34 plus 48 is a positive 14. So you get x equals 17 and y equals 14. Again, what we did first is that we rearranged it for y equals, then just set them equal to each other. Take a look at question number seven. Now, number seven involves decimals. Um, you could, if you wanted to, the biggest number of decimal places in this one is just one decimal place. So if you wanted to, you could take and multiply by 10 and multiply by 10, distribute, 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 distribute to make them all into non-decimal numbers. But you don't even have to do that if you don't want to. I see a 0.4 and a 0.4. So what I would personally do is I would choose one of them and multiply by negative one because that way I'm going to create a 0.4y and a negative 0.4y. I'm going to create my own opposites. Again, you could do the top one by multiply the top one by negative one as well. There are multiple ways to solve this. Go ahead and find both x and y. If you want to multiply all six things by 10, you could do that to make them into non-decimals or just multiply the top equation by negative one or the bottom equation by negative one. Create opposites with your y's. Go ahead and solve this one, please. If you chose to multiply by tens, remember you would have to do both of them and distribute all six times. Why by 10? Because there's one decimal place. Remember, if there's two decimal places, you have to multiply by 100 to get rid of the decimal. If you multiply, you would end up with 3x plus 4y equals 18 and negative 2x plus 4y equals 8. So you would get rid of your decimals and then you just have to solve this one. Now, after you do that, 
you'd still have to do the same thing that I'm about to do in this first one and create opposites with your y's by multiplying by negative one, either the top equation or the bottom equation. It doesn't matter. I chose to just take and multiply, sort of skip this step of multiplying by tens, just something extra to do, and just take and multiply that bottom equation by negative one to create my opposites with my y's. I'm just going to rewrite this top equation because I'm not touching that. And now I'll distribute negative one times negative 0.2 is positive 0.2 because a negative times a negative is a positive minus 0.4y equals negative 0.8. I'm going to take that and add going down. Now I have my opposites. Now I have my 0.4 and my negative 0.4y. So when I add going down, those will just cancel out. So I have 0.5x equals, this is one when you add going down. Divide by 0.5, divide by 0.5. One divided by 0.5 is two. So x equals two. I can now take this x equals two and sub it in. I can sub it into here or here for x. I'm gonna sub it into that top equation. So I'm gonna have, whoops, I'm gonna have 0 0.3 times 2 plus 0 0.4y equals 1.8. So I'm going to have 0 0.6 at the beginning. I'm going to subtract that 0 0.6 from both sides. 0 0.4y equals 1.2. Divide by 0 0.4 and divide by 0 0.4. So you get y equals three. So I got x equals two and y equals one. We take a look at question number eight. This one involves graphing. You will have to graph in Schoology. You will see how to do that on the review. You actually have to draw on the graph and I will hand score those. So when you go to graph it, notice that this first one is in the correct notation already. So you want to find your slope find your y-intercept and graph your line. The second one, we need to rearrange for y equals first, then find your slope and your y-intercept and graph your line. Where they cross is the solution. Remember that this point, the first number in your point is how many go over, the second number is how many go up or down. Go ahead and Graph this, please.
When you take a look at this first equation, you have y equals two thirds x minus four. This is your slope. Your slope is always a fraction. It is two over three. That really means that we are going up two over three. Your y intercept is your negative four. So we're gonna start graphing it at zero, negative four. So zero, negative four is right here. That's where our first dot is. And then we're going to follow our slope twice. We're gonna go up two over three, up two over three. This is what our graph looks like. For our second one, and you should always label your lines. It's a good habit to get into. Um, for the second one, we need to rearrange it for y equals. So minus 3x minus 3x. So we have 3y equals negative 3x plus 18. When you switch around the order, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. So y equals negative 1x plus six. Now remember, slope is always written as a fraction. So this is really negative one over one. This negative one means that we're going down one over one, and we're gonna start at zero comma six. So we're gonna start right here at zero comma six, and now we're gonna follow our slope. Down one over one, 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 down one over one. Connect your dots. These two lines cross right here. Where they cross is your solution, all right? They cross over to six up to zero. So that is where they cross right there. Questions on that one? Remember that you could always type it into your graphing calculator. Once you rearrange it for y equals, you could type it in and graph your two lines and see where they cross. Make sure that your graph looks the same as the graphing calculator. Take a look at the last question, number nine. How many solutions does this system have? Notice that this is y equals and y equals again. So we are going to set them equal to each other. Go ahead and do that, please. Set them equal to each other and solve. First thing that we need to do is to get rid of the parentheses, distribute, distribute. So I have negative six X plus six. I want to solve for X. So to get rid of this negative six X, I have to add six X and add six X. These cancel out. So when you do that, all that you're left with is six equals six. All of your letters disappear and you're just left with two numbers. These two numbers are the same. Since they are the same, this is infinite solutions, since they are the same. All of the ones that we did so far were all one solution because you got X equals a number and Y equals a number. Remember the other possible thing is when you get different things on the two sides of the equal sign. All of your letters cancel out, we end up with different numbers on each side of the equal sign. That is no solution. So if you end up with the same thing on both sides, that's infinite. If you end up with different things on the two sides, that is no solution. Thank you.